So, and we're going to talk about cell structure and function. So here's a little background on cells. They are the basic unit of life. All living organisms are composed of cells, and one or more of them. Um, all cells come from other cells. There's no such thing as spontaneous generation. They, organisms don't come out of nowhere. They, they come from other cells. Um, cells perform all of life's functions. And here's a brief rundown on what those are. You've probably already seen these before. Uh, they're composed of one or more cells. Uh, all living things are capable of reproduction. Uh, they contain genetic material. Um, they evolve and adapt. They have a metabolism, meaning that they use an energy source and they use matter. Um, they have homeostasis. Can anybody tell me what homeostasis is? Somebody? Oh, come on. Somebody knows what homeostasis is. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, homeostasis is a sense of balance, uh, meaning they, they balance the water intake, they balance minerals, they balance all the molecules that they need, temperature. That's what homeostasis is. Uh, all cells, all living things, respond to the environment, meaning the temperature changes, they have some sort of mechanism for dealing with that. Or if, uh, or they can respond to a predator coming near. Mm. Things like that. All cells grow and develop. That means they go from being small to getting bigger. Development means uh, they age. Good question. So textbooks kind of have this two-dimensional approach to cells where, where you're taught that this is an animal cell and this is a plant cell. In the reality, they don't really look like this. They're, these are composites. They're, they're just kind of thrown together mixtures of what you would typically see in a cell. In reality, cells kind of look like this. Uh, anybody know what kind of cell this would be? What kind of tissue it comes from? Oh. Is it an onion root tip? No, these are actually muscle cells. Oh. Uh, um, oh. And I don't know. any ideas why they might have extra mitochondria? What is mitochondria? So they oh, can energy. produce energy. For energy, yes, muscle cells and nerve cells both use a lot of energy, so they're going to have a, a lot of mitochondria in them. And the, here's another kind of cell. These are bacteria cells. We've got spirals, we got rods, and we got spheres. Uh, and and uh, anybody know whether these are prokaryotes or eukaryotes? What are they? Eukaryotes are typically plants and animals. Uh, bacteria are going to be under the category of prokaryotes. Um, and the main, thing, the main distinguishing thing between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is prokaryotes don't have a nucleus and they're missing a lot of the organelles. And here's an, another example of cells. These are nerve cells. And these things can be huge. They can, they can run the length of your entire body. Are they all linked, like connected together? Yeah, they they all connect together and. Well, because like if you pinch your finger, you it like sends the energy up to your body to your brain. So yeah. they have to be connected, or else. No okay. And then we got these yeah. kind of cells. Anybody know know what uh, what these little green things are? Chlorophyll. They're chloroplasts. Chlorophyll is actually a molecule that's contained within these types of cells. Get learned. Um, so uh, what, uh, what uh, function do the chlorophylls, do the chloroplasts do? Uh, yes, photosynthesis. Um, okay, it's meaning that they use sunlight to create energy. And uh, anybody know what the products of photosynthesis are? Energy. Energy, okay, what is the form of the energy? 
What is the molecule? Oh, uh, carbon too high of a level two. Carbon, no, that's uh, respiration. It, it's the other, the other gas. There's one other gas, though. Carbon dioxide comes from what gas in respiration? Oxygen. Oxygen. Yes, these produce oxygen. Oxygen and a, a sugar, usually glucose. Okay, these are another kind of cell. These are your skin cells. This is what they look like under the surface when they're still alive. Okay, and this is what they look like on the surface of your skin. They're all dried out. They're not alive anymore. That's, that's attractive. Um, so, uh, anybody know what the term is for uh, the chemical breakdown of a cell? Number three. Uh, what is the term for the chemical breakdown of a cell causing it to basically die? The cell cycle? Um, it's actually lysis. lysis. That's an important term to know. It, lysis basically means splitting the cell. How do you spell that? L Y S I S. L Y S I S. Okay. And these are another kind of cell. Uh, we got, and these are onion root tip cells. Oh. So this is what, what the tip of the root looks like under kind of a distant magnification. Here's what they kind of look like up close. And you can kind of see uh, cell division going on here where they're going through anaphase where the DNA is being split apart. We got metaphase here, we got prophase, interphase. You can kind of see uh, cell division going on with these. Uh, anybody know the, another term for the word cell division? Oh, it's like re mitosis. Mitosis. mitosis, that's right. Mitosis. <clears throat> okay, these are another kind of cell. These are, these are red blood cells, and here's a white blood cell. Can somebody tell me what main organelle is missing in red blood cells? That is typically in every single cell out there. Nucleus. The nucleus, yeah. Red blood cells don't have a nucleus, so they don't live very long. They're, they're only around for a few days usually. And white blood cells, as you know, uh, help fight infections. Okay, so t cells come in many shapes, sizes. They're three-dimensional, meaning they have they have shape. They have shape. <laughs> they're not these flat things you see in the textbook. Okay. So, what is the outermost layer of a plant cell? It provides rigid support and protection. Cell wall. Cell wall. Cell wall. Wow. Good job on that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. The, the, so, what are these things? These are the outermost layer on the animal cell. They're also in plant cells, but they're not the outside layer. It's the uh, cell membrane. Cell membrane. Cell membrane. Yeah. And they're composed of something called a phospholipid bilayer, which is kind of shown here in proteins. What is this? Cell membrane. Cell membrane. If I'm moving too fast, just let me know. I'm, I'm kind of new to this, so I can't kind of, if I'm nervous, I kind of tend to talk a little fast, so just let me know, and I'll slow down for you, okay? Okay. Okay. So, what are these little green dots? Bacteria. Chloroplast. Chloroplast. Chloroplast, yes. They're double membrane organelles. <laughs> they use chlorophyll for photosynthesis. And they contain membranous structures called thylakoids. I think thylakoids was one of your fill in the blanks there. Thylakoids? How do you spell that? It's oh, it's right. a bear. In a plant that contains thylakoids. So it contains membranes. No, it contains chloroplast. Okay, the double membrane organelle in plants that contains thylakoids and uses chlorophyll for photosynthesis is known as a chloroplast. chloroplast. Good too. And there's chloroplast too. <laughs> Thank you.
is that it? Is that a minute? Okay, you need to calm down so Because it's blue and green. Everybody got that? Okay. We'll move on now. Okay. Right here, we see these kind of little, small, hair-like projections coming out of the cell. They're mainly used for locomotion and feeding, meaning they help them the move and they help them eat. Is it? What is that called? I, well, that's what I'm wondering. Uh, it's called the is it cilia? cilia, yes, that cilia. is it. Cilia. Cilia are these small ones. <laughs> Can you spell it? These long S ones over here are called something different. S-I-L-L-I-A. S-I-C-I-L-A. C-I-L-I-A. Yeah, stop. Oh, you can't even see that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like, it's dark. That's okay. Oh, I see it now. I can see it. It's yeah. Well, you spelled it wrong. Okay. It's a C-I-L. Over here we have these oh, kind of longer whip-like flagella. Yes. I don't know. Whoa. Sounds like six grade. We got stud. <laughs> flagella, and if there's more than one, they're called flagellum. Flagella. Is that what goes in my jello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they, and they just basically help the cell move around. Yes. Okay, these are kind of a trickier one. I couldn't find a picture of them because you can only see them with an electron microscope. And they just look like little lines. They're basically invisible. But they are tubular in shape. They're used in cell division. They're absent from most plants. And they're only invisible with an electron microscope. What are they called? Centriole. You did? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is this number nine? Yeah. Who's studying? You are going to slash this <laughs> test. I don't remember. Do you know the centrioles? Mm -hmm. Oh, I spelled it wrong. It's going to be similar to the one you took at the beginning. Of the class. Oh, okay. Is it the exact same one? It's going to be similar. Wait. It's the exact same one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Can I take my first one, not the second one? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> moving on. These are another thing I couldn't find a picture of because they're too small to see. They're composed of proteins, are responsible for the shape of the cell, they help it keep, keep it, it inflated, uh, they help the cell move around, um, they help the organelles move around within the cell and all the proteins. Um, they're only visible with an electron microscope, and they can somewhat be related to the scaffolding of a no. building. Oh, They're is all it ribosome? No, not ribosome. No. No, it's. Uh, the word skeleton is in it. Oh, oh psychoskeletosis. Skeletosis? Cytoskeleton. What? I know that one. Cytoskeleton. Oh, <laughs> What the heck? Maybe you should calm down. Skeletosis. Skeletosis. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. These are found in eukaryotes, and they contain the genetic material. They're these little dots that you can see in almost any cell out there. Nucleus. Good job. Yes, it is yeah. the nucleus. Dark thing I'm not her. Yeah, I got it. Okay. After so I good. said it. No, I said for you. <laughs> Pretty sure Jackson said. Oh. Oh, burn. <laughs> okay. These are ribosomes. Wow. Good job. What is yes. the ribosomes? Wow. <laughs> They're the little dots that are uh, all over the uh, this structure right here. And uh, they're absent on this. And ribosomes are also spread out throughout the cell. They are embedded in. So it's embedded in the nuclear envelope? No, that's not the nuclear envelope. This part right here is the nucleus. Okay. I'm going to be asking you about this part and this part in a second. Yeah. Oh, okay. Stop being an overachiever. No. <laughs> Just kidding. So those are ribosomes. He's going to show you in like two seconds. Okay. So these other two structures right here, this and this, uh, they're attached to the outer membrane of the nucleus. 
They make lipids, proteins, and other molecules.